even as our dear country continues to sink and to sink into a ditch this morning i called it a sewage mtaro there are questions that are arising on the minds of kenyans how do you tell the difference between a true kenyan and a tribal kenyan well the answer to that question is very simple and while focusing on the answer to that question i would like us to look at the damage being done in our nation called kenya as a result of blatant tribalism because many of us don't fully realize the damage some kenyans are doing to our dear motherland damage which usually takes decades yeah and even after all those decades sometimes still that damage has not even been repaired not even partially many kenyans don't realize now the answer to the question i've just posed is very simple and straightforward you know the way to tell a true kenyan from a tribalist is from their actions because talk is cheap yeah anybody can say anything and indeed we have seen with this kenya kwanza government there is a lot of talk in the opposite direction of what people are really doing yeah kenyans are already sick of that we have seen too much of that and therefore only actions will tell you the truth for instance for my bc commissioner Irene Masit her actions speak louder than words and what Masit has done yes it has disrupted her life it has disrupted the life of her family it has even put her life in danger it has done all those things but i think you'll agree with me that what this great kenyan lady has done will stand the test of time and yet another kenyan from the rift valley who is a true kenyan is a former legislator a man called alfred keter now some remarks by alfred keter very recently actually underline some of the issues i'm discussing here today and bring them out to the open very clearly now according to bona keter moi university is on the verge of bankruptcy and according to this former legislator we know most universities are in trouble we know most universities in our country called kenya have various issues but according to keter the main reason why moi university is in trouble is because of tribalism he has said that very clearly and of course he reminds us of the very controversial situation a few years back when a very competent vice chancellor of that university a professor iro yeah was removed because he did not hail from the area now if you are one of those people who believe that by having one community getting the best jobs the vast majority of the jobs in government there is really no big deal it is not so serious after all another regime will come and it will be another tribe's turn to dominate for those who think like that i urge you to think again and those who think that it is not such a big deal for entrepreneurs from one community to get huge huge government contracts and of course some of these cases have not yet been highlighted yeah because people are smart you will never see the names you're looking for as owners of these companies but the truth is the true owners of those companies hail from one part of the republic and only one part you will see on some of these company documents joroge and onyango are the directors but those are just messengers <laughs> or in other cases 
people who have made deals they are not the real beneficiaries of those huge government tenders and even those Kenyans in the diaspora especially in the United States who don't love their country enough yeah, please you need to wake up you know just this morning I was informed by a guy called Davis who's on our telegram forum very informed guy with a knee on the ground and with others are the true heroes of the Kumikucha brand yeah because they always give me a heads up here a heads up there they give me a lot of information anyway I was informed that there are some states <laughs> Which are being run under UDA charter. <laughs> I'm talking about the Kenyan community. In those states. Yani these Kenyans are swimming in money. Without even thinking of the consequences. Ay, 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 ay. Yani kukwa inchi ya wenyewe. Na unaribu inchi yako uko nyumbani. How? Gosh, my dear Kenyans, please wake up. Kenyans in the diaspora are supposed to be ahead in these matters. They're supposed to lead the rest of us because they're more exposed. They're closer to the Mzungu and his evil antics. They see these things firsthand every day. And then you hear there's a you dear stronghold in a state amongst the Kenyan community in a state in the USA hey, how painful is that and I'm sure these people have children some of them may even have grandchildren have you stopped to think even one day what kind of country you're going to leave behind what kind of legacy you're going to leave behind for those children of yours who you love? Have you ever thought of that? Anyway, let me not get carried away. You know the biggest issue here is that when people behave like this, they're actually fighting national unity. Which I do not need to emphasize its importance in building a nation, especially our motherland. Please allow me to go back to history so that we fully understand the full impact of our actions today yeah, on what is coming in the future. In the year 1966, the then president of Kenya, Mze Jomo Kenyatta, appointed a new vice president called Daniel Toretich Arap Moy. And what followed shortly after this appointment was a very evil scheme, a very evil, corrupt scheme, where a few people in the Jomo Kenyatta government displaced very many members of the House of Mumbi from prime land in the Mount Kenya region, mostly from relatively small plots. Yeah, which were consolidated into large farms. And what is of interest for us here today is where these families went. They were resettled in the vast, unpopulated, then unpopulated, Rift Valley region. Was there resistance from the communities in the Rift Valley? Of course there was. But how it was dealt with is what should really interest us today. Yeah. These people were given promises. Yeah. We're doing these people a favor. And this favor is going to be returned. How? Through government favors. Government favors for you and your children. Let me just put it like that. Now it is important to focus on the fact that all the major people involved in these deals were politicians and politicians need influence on the ground 
all the time. And so those who had granted these favors were told to be patient. They kept on being told be patient until the year 1978 when the new president Daniel Turutich Moy, under great pressure because he did not have very much support across the country. You know when you don't have so much support nationally you have to be very careful to start with your own home ground. Make sure that the support in your home area is solid and that is what you're going to use as a foundation to jumpstart your support yeah, from other regions in the country. Now Kenyans who are old enough during the Moy era will remember the disaster. Yeah? Practically every senior official of government, virtually almost every chief executive office of a parastatal, especially the very prosperous parastatals, like at that time the Kenya Post and Telecommunications, were all headed by people from one part of the country. And even in those organizations, senior people in key positions, especially positions to do with handling money, especially positions that usually received a large allocation from treasury, all those people were from one region in the country and one region alone. And now you understand their thinking then. We did government a favor, a very big one. They have started returning that favor, but it is still not enough. This is only a drop in the ocean. We expect much more. And therefore with this information, you will understand the curious situation. When Moy was almost leaving power in 1997, where he got booed in many sections of the Rift Valley. Why? Because there's a feeling amongst the community that despite his 24 years in power, he had still not done enough for the community. <laughs> now you understand why people are thinking like that. Now I don't think I need to go into the damage these kinds of moves usually do to a nation. Yeah, you end up with people incompetent and even the people who are qualified become untouchable. Therefore, they can literally get away with anything. Let me just give you a quick example. In the 80s, the chief executive officer of Kenya Post and Telecommunications used to keep the company checkbook in his rural home in the Rift Valley. I kid you not. And he used to travel to his rural home every weekend. And major suppliers of the Kenya Post and Telecommunications at that time, yeah, chasing checks worth millions, would take time away from their weekend. There was no other way if they wanted to get paid. Would take time away from their weekend and travel to Kericho, where the said chief executive officer would append the last signature required in that check. You know these checks require two or three signatures. He would append the last signature, his own, on that check and hand it over to the particular supplier. Of course, in exchange for something. <laughs> if you know what I mean. But just to be clear, unatoa kitu kidogo, ndo unapata check yako. True story. And just one example. Now, fast forward to 2003. When the National Rainbow Coalition presidential candidate at that time, Emilio Standi Mwai Kibaki, swept into power. Now immediately Kibaki landed in State House. One of the first things he did was to fire senior officials in government, chief executive officers in parastatals, who hailed from the Rift Valley. And he had a good excuse. These people had run down the government to fully understand yeah, the damage that was done and continues to be done in our country. I urge you to remove emotions from this so that you fully understand what we are talking about here. Now, 
What did the people in the Rift Valley feel when Kibaki started sucking people left, right and center from their communities? Of course they went back to history. We did this and were promised and we had not even received enough. Now somebody has come and is victimizing us. Now the rest unaweza kujijazia. Yeah, it's really very simple. And it is this. The next leader from that community, the next prominent leader from that community will immediately be under pressure to reinstate the community yeah, in their positions of getting a reward for what they were promised in the 60s. Isn't that true? And then after that, whoever will take over from that leader from the community will do exactly what Mwai Kibaki did in the year 2003. And this thing will never end. And meanwhile, who takes the brunt? Who is damaged most? It is the nation called Kenya. Now I hope from that small story, from history that I've given you, we all realize that even small things that we do on the spur of the moment, which look like they are very small, they have far-reaching consequences that stretch very far into the future and may be very difficult to correct, virtually impossible to correct, going forward. And so the big question is, in a situation like that, thanks to the seeds planted by Jomo Kenyatta and Daniel Toretich Arab Moy, in a situation like that, how do you seek genuine national unity? You tell me! How? I believe I've given you both sides of the coin. Yeah. Based on the reality in politics. That is exactly what happens. That is exactly what has happened. So how do we get out of this mess? How? Of course great Kenyan patriots like Alfred Gater and Irene Masit are a good start. Yeah, but they're only a good start. You have to go to the root of the problem. So how do you sort out the root of the problem? Hey, yeah. I would be delighted to hear what you have to say. And especially positive suggestions on how we can repair our country in future years. Yeah, and do something that will stand the test of time. And considering this pain, yeah, in case you've not yet had the chance to take in my latest sizzler, the Ruto Kenyans will never know, there is a unique opportunity over the next 24 hours to do so. If you feel that you need this very important content and your budget doesn't quite cut it to enable you to get your hands on it, for the next 24 hours, you can name your prize. Lakini usinifinye sana. And for that reason, the limit will be 50. Yeah, the first 50 to send me an email. On that email address you see on your screens right now. You miss this at gmail.com. Naming your prize. And then guess what? I will also throw in another valuable kumikucha book. You can choose for yourself. Or you can allow me to choose for you. The most liked of my other ebooks, of course, is Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency. How Mutula Kilozo Senior was murdered. Yeah. And then there's another one called The President's Lovers. Now that last one, one of you took it in recently. And they were delighted, very excited about it. And yes. It talks about a Kenyan president. And so, you have this very exciting opportunity. Please take full advantage of it. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.